Hey guys, welcome into Faith in Football. My name is Neil, and we are five days away from the kickoff of the regular season between the Chiefs and the Ravens Thursday night football. If you've got Peacock, you know what time it is because you've been hearing stuff about it all month long. Football on Peacock. Hashtag not a sponsor. But if you hear us, you know, I'm open. So just saying. Um, but listen, guys, we've got drafts coming up this weekend. You may have already drafted. Um, today is Saturday when I'm recording this. Uh, we still have Sunday, and we, of course, have my League of Record draft on Tuesday that we're going to be live from Zia back room, the VIP room at Zia. Guys, make sure that down below you subscribe, like, share, and make sure that you smash that notification bell so you know when we are going live. And don't forget about the goodies that we're going to have. Look, I'm not going to go into it because we've had additions to the menu. You're just going to have to tune in and see how we do it big on the Zia Thunderdome 2024 league. Make sure you tune in. Don't miss it. So you're doing your draft. You might be already through it. You didn't wind up with the guys that you wanted or you had to reach on guys and you might not be feeling that great about some of the guys that you got. That's fine. Listen, it's the beginning of the season. I remember last year, one of my buddies had drafted Raheem Mostert. And I was like, man, what are you doing with Raheem? Like the the guy, he can't make it through a season. He's always hurt. Yeah, he's a great running back. He does phenomenal when he's on the field, but he's broken. And that's the topic of today's message is broken vessels. Listen, we are all broken vessels in the world's eyes, even in God's eyes. God knows that we have imperfections. He knows that we've got cracks, missing pieces. But listen, he is loving. He is gracious. He is full of grace to forgive our imperfections, to just glance over and look over all of the stuff that we've done wrong because he already knew that we were going to do it. He knew that we're going to go down that wrong road. He knew that we were going to end up where we're at. But that's not the end of our story, okay? Our story is continually being written. And I want you to remember that as we go through this episode. Now, I'm talking about John chapter 4, verse 39, and Luke chapter 8, verse 46. Now, both from the NLT. And, you know, we see throughout Scripture that God uses broken people. He used... Rahab, Rahab, the prostitute, to shield the spies when they went in to scope out the land. And he used her to hide them. She's even in Jesus's lineage. So tell me that he can't use people no matter what area of life that you're in right now, no matter what path that you're on. He can always turn you around. He can always turn around your circumstances All you've got to do is trust and believe. And that's what we're going to be talking about today. Trust and believe in certain players who we might view as broken vessels. We might view as guys who maybe, you know, they've had some injuries here and there. And we really don't see the production. But this year, I'm going to highlight four players, two running backs, two wide receivers that could change your trajectory for your fantasy football team and be that diamond in the rough, be that broken vessel that you put back together on your team, just the way that God puts people back together for the glory of his name. So John chapter four, verse 39, we see the story of the woman at the well. Now I want you to go back because this, this story begins in verse four. So Go all the way back, and I want you to read it. I want you to go to John chapter 4 and read about the woman at the well. Read about how she wasn't picking up what what Jesus was laying down. She was not vibing with him. She was like, how are you, a Jew, talking to me? Like, Jews and Samaritans did not get along, okay? It's kind of like, you know, Republicans and Democrats right now with the election coming up. They're not getting along. But... 
Jesus told her everything that she had ever done to prove to her that he was the Messiah, to show her that he did know who she was and what she had done, and it didn't matter to him. It doesn't matter what you've done. It doesn't matter who you are or what stage of life you're in, whether you're young or old or middle-aged. It doesn't matter. God can still use you. God still wants to use you, and he has a plan for you, okay? So how this Samaritan woman just was able to open up is the same way that we need to open up, that we need to accept Jesus as he is and as he says that we can be too. Okay, in chapter uh, four of John, verse 39, it reads, many Samaritans from the village believed in Jesus because the woman had said, he told me everything I ever did. Here's the thing. We have to share our faith. We have to go out and we can't keep it to ourselves. Like, it's great that you know scripture. It's great that you can quote it. Guess what? So can the devil. Okay, but what he's not doing, he's not sharing that. He's not making sure that everybody around him knows that Jesus is Lord. So that's the difference between him and us. Like we need to share just the way that the woman at the well ran to the village and shared with everybody that she saw that she met this man named Jesus, that he was the Messiah, that he did all these great things. So. Remember, as we're going through this and, you know, you might find a podcast that is just out of this world. Like I found the fantasy footballers and I tell everybody I can. I talk about it on this show. And that's not really like the world's view of how you promote a podcast, how you promote a YouTube channel. It's telling them, telling your viewers to, hey, go check out this guy. You want everybody to check you out. You want everybody to look at you. Well, here's the thing. I know that I'm not the end all be all of fantasy football advice. I know I'm not the end all be all of scripture. I don't know everything. I don't have a full understanding. No one does. But what we do have is we do have the ability to share what we do know. And we have a responsibility to share what we know, what we believe, and how God has worked in our life. And that's what I'm trying to get across to people on this channel so if you're going through a tough time look down the bottom it's not just open for fantasy football it's open for life period okay so down the bottom hit me up if you got a question you want to talk through some things hit me up i'll be more than happy to talk to you be that ear that everybody needs at some point in time okay then i want you to jump over to luke luke chapter 8 verse 46 says but jesus said and let me give you a little backstory here. This is talking about the woman with the issue of blood. Now, they don't tell us exactly what the issue is, just that she's been bleeding for 12 years. Now, wrap your mind around that. Like, she's had this problem for over a decade, okay? That's about as long as it's been since Washington won the division, okay? That's a long time, okay? Maybe it's been as long or Maybe your team's been suffering through longer than this woman. But nevertheless, that's a long time to suffer with anything. She spent all her money. she had been all these doctors. Nobody of the world could help her. The same way that nobody of the world can help you in what you're dealing with. Only Jesus. He is the way, the truth, the life. No one comes from the, through the, to the Father but through him. Remember that. Okay, whenever you're down, Jesus is the way. Jesus is always out there with his arms open, outstretched, waiting for you to come back to him. Now, we have to be deliberate in our faith. We have to be deliberate in what we're doing. It's not like an accident that people know you're a Christian. It's not an accident that they find out about Jesus. It has to be purposeful. You have to have a purpose. This woman sought Jesus out. She wanted, she knew and believed and had faith that touching, just touching him, touching his garment, not even him physically, like not his body, just the clothes that he was wearing would heal her 
That is a next level kind of faith, guys. And this is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 8, verse 46, NLT version. But Jesus said, someone deliberately touched me, for I felt healing power go out from me. Okay. Now, everybody was crowded around Jesus. He was on his way to resurrect this little girl who had died. Now, he said she was sleeping, but she was dead. He was saying that, you know, just so that, you know, you know the dad wouldn't freak out a little bit. That's my take on it. But when the, she was going through the crowd, a whole bunch of people around him, and in one version it says that he says, who touched me? And his disciples said, the the crowd is is great around you. How can you ask who touched you? Like everybody's touching you. There was a lot of people touching Jesus, but they weren't deliberately touching Jesus. They weren't. There wasn't a purpose in their touch. They didn't expect to receive anything in touching him. Okay, but this woman did. This woman was deliberate in her faith. She was deliberate in her action to go and actually touch Jesus. So the same way that sometimes through your fantasy football, through your draft, through the season, you've got to be deliberate when you go after a player. You've got to not look at the guys around him. Like if you have a strong conviction about a certain player, there are guys that you're going to bypass. At the end of the year, you look back and go, Man, I can't believe I passed on that guy. But you had a conviction about this one player, and that conviction pays off sometimes, okay? But can I tell you this, that your conviction with Jesus will pay off every time, okay? Sometimes it doesn't pay off in the way that we envision it, but it will always pay off. So keep that in mind as we roll through this episode, and it might be a little shorter episode this, this go around, so don't worry about strapping in, holding on, you know, I'm, I'm not going to keep you guys too long, but... We're going to roll through four players today that you got to be deliberate in, that you've got to have a conviction on, that you've got to open your eyes and kind of see what is the possibility if they are on your team. Now, I'll tell you right now, there are some guys that you're going to draft. You're going to drop them after re after week one. OK, they were the late round flyer that you really don't have a conviction about that you just, you know, whatever. And you were just kind of, kind of trying to see how they were going to do week one. That's great. Okay. But these four guys, me personally, I have a conviction about, and I want to open your eyes to it and kind of put a bug in your ear about when you go through your draft, or even if these guys are undrafted, because sometimes, you know, we go through drafts, not everybody's like our league of record where we don't have a kicker, we don't have a defense. So there's, you know, a bunch of spots that are taken up by kickers and defenses to where players slip you know nobody has a conviction about everybody thinks that they're going to be bad so keeping up keeping a, an ear out for that as i roll through this uh, you guys know what time it is if you've been watching me and listening any point in time you know whenever i take a drink i gotta mention zia of lafayette and you find him at 235 Ducey road lafayette louisiana and remember, viewers of my show, you can go down there, show them that you subscribe, just pop open your phone on YouTube, say, hey, I'm subscribed to Faith in Football. And he told me to come down here, told me to check you guys out. And he said that I could get a free appetizer. That's right. A free appetizer of your choice for the table. OK, so make sure you go down there make sure you check them out. Tell them that I sent you and get pick up your free appetizer. Now, we have a special treat for you that right now we just brought back, or Zia just brought back, the pesto trout. It's been gone since before COVID, so it's been a long time before since it's come back. We've got garlic, uh, we got herb chicken coming up on the menu, so make sure that you're keeping an eye out for that one. Make sure that you're calling up for all of your catering needs in the Lafayette area. You can call Andy at 337-406-0013. Make sure that you say, hey, Neil sent you. And uh, who knows? Andy might hook you up with something. The, the guy's always hooking people up with things. So 
if you tell them that uh, that I sent you, I might get a little something. You never know. It's worth a mention. Okay. So make sure you check them out. Go down and uh, and see them at 235 Duce Road, Lafayette, Louisiana. Don't forget to show them that you subscribe to the show so you pick up your free appetizer of your choice. And while you're down there, try the ribs, try the grits. They are delicious. And if you're not into that, the shrimp is out of this world as well. And don't forget, if you like trout, definitely check out the pesto trout brand. Well, I say brand new, but back on the menu after a long sabbatical. So who is my first uh, player that we're talking about today? It is none other than, as the ballers call him, uh, J.K. One Leg. Uh, it's J.K. Dobbins. He is coming off an injury. However, he is on a run-heavy team. Okay, so he's going. He's not foreign to this, the scheme. Okay, this offense is not foreign to him. He's coming from Baltimore. Guess what? So is Greg Roman. Greg Roman was the old OC in Baltimore with J.K. Dobbins and Gus Edwards. Now, some people are like, well, Gus Edwards is the, the goal line guy. This, that, the other. That's fine. I'm going to tell you right now, J.K. Dobbins is going to be much better coming off of this injury than he was in Baltimore. If this guy pays off, okay, he will be a game changer on a very run heavy offense that are devoid of receivers. Remember, the Chargers got rid of Keenan Allen and Mike Williams, two of their top pass catchers. Justin Herbert is dealing with foot injury. Do you really think that they want to push that by having him drop back and put pressure on that foot? No. They want to take the pressure off of him. They want to run the ball, control the tempo, and grind out games. Okay. Now, I don't think that they're going to be up a whole lot of games, but they definitely want to keep the ball in the offense's hand and away from the defense. Okay. So, or keep, I'm sorry, keep their defense off the field. So, right now, his current ADP is 44. Overall, it's 155. You're getting him in the 12th, 13th round sometimes. And, th guys, that's your dart throw area, okay? 12, 13 rounds down to the 16th, 15th, 16th round, however long your turn, your uh, draft is. Look, this guy's a pure dart throw that has extreme payoff if you get this right. Now, you're going to be able to see if you get it right. This is one of the guys I'm talking about that if you see Gus Edwards week one getting all the goal line carries, getting the most of the usage, this is somebody that you go, hey, I'm done. Drop them. That's it. Okay. Let's let somebody else pick them up and, and do it. But if you're right, you're going to avoid the scramble to the waiver wire to pick this guy up. Okay. Or that embarrassing trade offer that you're going to have to send the J.K. Dobbins manager who had more faith in you, who decided to step out and go for it and take J.K. Dobbins over whoever else is going on, going on around him. And you might get, you know, a nice little flex position out of J.K. Dobbins. Now, the next guy I'm going to be talking about, another running back who is two years removed from an injury. Now, the fantasy community as a whole was big on this guy. I mean, just banging the drum, standing on the table, yelling and screaming to the top of their lungs that this guy was going to be a game changer, that he was just going to be out of this world, okay? Talking about Javante Williams. Now, I haven't been really big on Javante Williams myself uh, as of late, but after seeing some videos after watching him uh, on some tape coming off the of injury two years removed. Now, remember the first year removed from injury guys are usually down. Okay. A la Tony, uh, Tony Pollard, who I've already sung the praises of much to uh, <laughs> much to my dismay because he was a cowboy and speaking well, of any cowboy, 
hurts my fandom. So, but uh, Javante Williams, two years removed from a catastrophic injury. He's coming back. Look, last year, he looked all right. You know, he, he looked pretty decent. He wasn't back to full strength. He wasn't back to full speed. But in a Sean Payton-led offense where the running back is a focal point of the passing attack, Javante Williams can catch. Okay. He's got a rookie quarterback. So Bo Nix has already been dubbed the starting quarterback for Denver. Now, there's no better friend to a rookie quarterback than a running back who can catch, and that's Javante Williams. So his current ADP is running back 28, okay? So he's a little bit higher than JK, all right? But uh, a couple years ago, he was running back 17. Uh, He finished as – or I'm sorry, he was – Running back 17 in stats, that's how he finished back in 2021 when he had a full season. If I'm not mistaken, that was his rookie year. Okay. This is what gave us such hope going into his sophomore year before he got injured. So make sure that you keep an eye on Javante Williams and J.K. Dobbins if you need a little help at running back. No, I'm not talking about Z again. I am talking about Keller's Bakery. Now, Keller's Bakery is in Youngsville. You, if you didn't see the episode that I did of my sleepers and bust with my boy Dusty Shores, make sure that you go back because it's him and his family that own Keller's Bakery in Youngsville. They're at 627 Lafayette Street in Youngsville, Louisiana. Uh, they are open from 6 to 3, Tuesday through Saturday. Okay. They're up, they're rolling. And look, if you haven't watched the video and watched the episode, go back, look at Sweetest Sleepers and Sour Bust. That episode that aired walks you through the back of Keller's and lets you know where all the magic happens within that bakery. Also, you can hear from his own lips, but I'll tell you here, if you go down to Keller's Bakery in Youngsville at 627 Lafayette Street, You can show him, just like you do with Zia, that you subscribe to my show, and he will give you, without purchase, two free cookies. Look, these cookies are delicious. If you want to go down there, check them out yourself. Look, while you're down there, I know there's no purchase necessary, but pick up like a pie, pick up a cake, pick up a dessert, something, dozen donuts, whatever they got down there. Go down there, make sure that you check them out. Tell them that I sent you. Pick up your two free cookies. You know, you don't have to tell anybody that you got them for free. You can eat them on the way home. It's fine. I'm down with that. But go down there, check them out. Tell Dusty I said hi. Um, look, and while you're in Lafayette, make sure that you go down and check out Ami's Groceries. Uh, they are at 603 Jefferson Street inside of Gordon Square. Uh, they're another sponsor of the show. Uh, love these guys. They have over 200 items from over 50 different local vendors. They are a great supporter of the local community. So make sure that you go down there, check them out. They've got farm fresh eggs, beef. Oh, and by the way, guess what else they got? That's right. Freeze dried snacks. Go down there, check them out. You will not be sorry. Trust me. If you'd like the freeze dried candy, they've got bags and bags of it from local vendors. Go down there, support local community. Tell them I sent you and tell Bradley down at Amis, Neil says hi. So wide receivers, we're talking Deontay Johnson. Yes, we are talking Deontay Johnson. I know some of you in the fantasy community who have been playing since he was a stealer and he was actually good back in Pittsburgh might've got burned by Deontay. It's not his fault. Okay. Deontay was not, was a victim of bad quarterback play and being on a run heavy team. Everybody knows that the Steelers love their running backs. We also know that they have a really good gift of picking outstanding wide receivers. Okay. So Deontay Johnson is not a joke. He is not washed by any stretch of anyone's imagination. Okay. 
He is, however, no longer with Pittsburgh. He is down in Carolina with, uh, with the new head coach, Dave Canales. Okay. Now, Dave Canales, who was formerly OC with Seattle and responsible for the resurgence of Geno Smith. That's right. Geno Smith. You might remember this guy. He's the one that got punched in the face in New York in the locker room by a teammate when he was with the Jets. He's bounced around a little bit, but found a home in Seattle. Now, he had an outstanding 2022 season that was otherworldly as far as anyone could see. And then 2023 happened and he kind of fell off. But what else happened in 2023? Oh, that's right. Baker Mayfield actually reminded us why he was drafted so high. And in doing so, made Mike Evans the, I don't know, universal youth. Or, you know, the, he had, apparently Mike Evans has found the fountain of youth in Tampa Bay. Because uh, this guy never ages. He's had put up over a thousand yards each year of his career. But in 2023, he finished as the wide receiver six. How is all this possible? Well, it's no no coincidence to me that Dave Canales was in Seattle for 2022 with Geno Smith. Magical season. He was in 2020. In 2023, he was in Tampa Bay with Baker Mayfield. Wait a minute. If it happens once, it's a fluke. It happens twice, it's a pattern. What happens when it goes three times? That's right. He's with Bryce Young, somebody that everyone's left for dead. And we saw what a difference a quarterback whisperer makes when Josh Allen went from the most inaccurate quarterback in the NFL to a fantasy god when it comes to points put up. He's finished quarterback one or two every year since his rookie season. Okay. Bryce Young was taken number one overall. So there's talent there. There's got to be. All he needs is the right system and the right person to put him in that system and work it. And that man is Dave Canales. Now, I say all of that to say this. Deontay Johnson is younger than Mike Mike Evans was when Dave Canales worked his magic with Baker Mayfield. Last year, Bryce Young, as bad as he was, still made Adam Thielen, a guy who's as close to a retirement home as you could possibly get in the NFL, an actual fantasy asset. Early league winning wide receiver. If you had Adam Thielen in the first part of last year, you saw that he basically carried your team to victory multiple weeks. This guy was the tar- the absolute focus of everything that Bryce Young did. Now, Adam Thielen is still there, but he's a year older. And I will tell you right now, Deontay Johnson's a much better wide receiver. So he's going to be giving Bryce Young a great target for all of the production that's going to be coming his way. So right now, his ADP, Deontay Johnson's ADP, is wide receiver 43. Guys, that's a value. You're playing PPR, go get Deontay Johnson, okay? Anybody who's going around him, look, I'll take Deontay Johnson any day of the week and twice on Sunday or whenever he's playing, whether it's Monday Night Football, Thursday Night Football, Friday Night, whatever. I'm taking Deontay Johnson, okay? I really don't want to leave a draft without him if I'm playing PPR, okay? Now, the next guy I'm going to be talking about, and yeah, I've been talking a lot. Can't tell you how excited I am for the kickoff of this season. This next guy I'm going to be talking about, Ohio State, former Ohio State wide receiver, Jackson Smith and Jigba, JSN for short. His current ADP is wide receiver 45. Now, 
Why do I bring him up? Why is he a broken vessel? He didn't have an injury. No, but he did have a broken team. Okay. Pete Carroll and the o the old OC that were in Seattle last year are gone. In comes the head coach and the, the old OC of the second place finish for college football, Washington Huskies. These guys come in, have a brand new system, and the position that JSN is playing is the same position that Jalen Polk, who got drafted by the Patriots, played in college. And if you haven't seen what Jalen Polk did in college, go back and check him out. He's worth definitely worth a look. And it is because of that system that he got noticed and was used as effectively as he was in Washington. So JSN, better, much better wide receiver. How do I know this? Don't take my word for it. I said he was a former Ohio State running back or wide receiver. Who else is a former Ohio State wide receiver? Oh, I don't know. Chris Olave, Garrett Wilson, his teammates. And in an interview with all three of them, both Olave and Garrett Wilson, who are going way above JSN, were asked, who is the better wide receiver out of the three of you guys? Both Garrett Wilson and Chris Olave said JSN was a better wide receiver than both of them. Now, I'm sorry, but if I've got two guys sitting on my left and my right who are saying that I'm a better receiver than they are, and Garrett Wilson is going in the first round because he's got a aging Aaron Rodgers, and Chris Olave is going in like the third, and he's got somebody like Derek Carr throwing him the ball. Look, Geno Smith, he's not an MVP candidate. However, I think he is just up there with Derek Carr, okay? He is, I'm not going to say he's as good as Aaron Rodgers, but at this stage of his career, he can he can sling it with them. Okay. So with this new change in offense, this new head coach, and JSN getting a boost to his confidence and being used for more than just a screenplay wide receiver, I'm telling you right now, JSN is fixing to blow up. Okay. We're going to see a second year breakout with JSN. Now, if you want somebody else to grab them, fine, go ahead, ignore me. But I'm telling you right now, JSN is the guy out of these four that I'm most excited about coming back because he's not coming off an injury like J.K. Dobbins or Devontae Williams, okay? He's on an offense that can produce, okay? Deontay Johnson, yes, he can be a, a difference maker on your team, but Carolina is still probably a couple years away from actually doing anything. Seattle, DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, Ken, uh, Ken Walker. They've got weapons. Okay. JSN, I'm seeing supplant Tyler Lockett as the number two in this offense. Watch it happen. And when it does, come back and tell me, sorry, you were right. I was wrong. And I didn't draft him, and I feel bad about it because I just lost this past week when he blew up for, I don't know, 120 yards and two touchdowns. So if it happens down the bottom, leave me a, a comment. Now, if I'm wrong, I will come back on the show and tell you I was wrong. Okay, so clip it, play it back to me, okay? I welcome it. Uh, remember, fantasy football should be fun. And taking takes like this and standing by them is part of it. So the same way that we need to be deliberate in our faith, you need to be deliberate in the guys that you want to take a stance on. So make sure that as long as you're taking a stance on a guy, go ahead and take a stance on God. Remember, guys, God's the only one worth taking a stance on, okay? All this fantasy stuff, it's great, it's fun. But don't lose focus on what's really important. Okay. So, guys, 
Y'all have a great day. And don't, oh, real quick before I go, don't forget, I've been doing the show without a hat since I got a haircut from my boy, Nick Reed, down at Alpha Barber Company. Uh, you can check them out at 4519 Johnson Street. Uh, he'll hook you up. Give him a call, 337-345-8233. Tell him Neil sent you and tell him, Nick's, tell him Nick that Neil says hi. And uh, who knows, he might give you, you know, a little, if you got a beard, you know, might give you a little beard touch up or, you know, for nothing. But I'm telling you right now, this dude's on point. He doesn't let you get out of his chair with that, with the hair out of place. Okay. Now my, uh, my hair's, you know, a little thinning right here and here. I, I recognize that, but, uh, you know, I did, did just turn 50. So I'm just happy to have a full head of hair. Okay. So go down there and check out my boy, Nick Reed, Alpha Barber Company, 4519 Johnson Street. Call him up, schedule an appointment, 337-345-8233. And guys, remember, lock in your draft, lock in who you want to take a stance on, take a stance on, don't let anybody dissuade you, not even me. Make sure that you turn, tune into the ballers, to the fantasy pros, for more in-depth coverage of your team's players and who you are looking to draft in your league. Let me know how your, how your draft turned out, by the way. Down the bottom, send me a screenshot, whatever, you know, of your team. If you want me to take a look at them, uh, we're going to be doing uh, start set for my Thursday show. Uh, I'll be putting I'll be trying to put that out on Wednesday um, after my draft. And, uh, you know, we'll kind of discuss how my drafts went and if I got who I wanted and who I was able to get where all that kind of good stuff. Don't forget. Down the bottom, subscribe, like, and share, and make sure that you smash that notification bell so you know when I go live and you'll be able to see what we do prior to draft, the fun that we have, the the camaraderie that we get uh, by getting together physically, not just online. It's a different feel, guys. I'm just telling you right now. It's a different feel, okay? There's a, more of a connection when you're meeting in person. So like the Bible says, uh, you know, do not neglect the gathering together of yourselves. Okay. So make sure that you don't do that. Make sure you get together with your buddies and hang out and fellowship and uplift, uh, lift each other up. However you do that. Sometimes it's playful jabs, you know, uh, but make sure you're taking it in stride. Okay, guys, good luck with this fancy season. We're getting ready to get into the meat and potatoes of it. We're getting ready to start do start sits. We're going to do a rewind every Tuesday. Uh, every Thursday, I'll have a start set out for you guys for the week. And that'll be the show. So make sure you tune in, subscribe, ask me questions. If you've got anything going on, I want to know about it. I want to help. That's what I'm here for. That was my purpose and my calling in doing the show. So help me fulfill it, guys. So. Till next time, I want you guys to remember that football is great or football is good, but God is greater. Guys, we'll see you next time on Faith in Football. Y'all have a blessed day.